Welcome to the lecture series on numerical methods. In the present lecture, we will discuss about interpolation. In the interpolation, first we will just uh, discuss uh, what interpolation means or where we are just using this interpolation. In the uh, second step, we will just discuss about uh, different operators like uh, finite difference operators that is a uh, different classes it is used for this approximate approximating this function with the polynomials and uh, how we can just uh, relate between these different operators so that I will just discuss in the last section of this lecture. So, whenever we are just going for this uh, interpolation or uh, we are just uh, trying to discuss about this interpolation, interpolation is nothing but that if we will have a set of data points then if the curve is passing through this set of data points especially it is called interpolation. Suppose we will have this data points like uh, x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Then if you will just uh, plot a curve passing through these points. then this curve is called interpolating curve. This means that if we are just finding this curve, the process of finding this curve passing through these points like x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 is called interpolation and the obtained curve is called interpolating curve. And here especially if you just see y0 is nothing but it is just taking the value of f at the point x0 here. Similarly, if you just define y1 here that is nothing but f of x1 here, y2 is nothing but f of x2 here, y3 is nothing but f of x3 here. This means that if we will have a function that is y equals to f of x, then particularly for this function f of x, if we will have the points like x0, x1 up to xn are the set of tabulated points or data points then at that point exactly we can just determine this functional values or the function at that points exactly. So, if we will have this functional values that is in the form of like y0 equals to f of x0, y1 equals to f of x1 and y2 equals to f of x2 and yn equals to f of xn. Then we can just put all these points and at that points various ways we can just uh, connect these points through the curves and the best way to fit this curve with these points is called interpolation here. So, basically before going to interpolation or how we can just approximate uh, this uh, uh, tabular values by a curve or a chord here. So, we will just discuss brief history about this interpolation here. So, interpolation came from ancient uh, Babylon and Greece where farmers are using basically uh, for their plantation of uh, their crops based on the prediction of uh, positions of sun, moon and the planets. Specifically, if you will just see in uh, India also, we are just uh, visualizing that if this is in the month of like monsoon month, it is just coming like uh, June or July. So, farmers started harvesting their crops basically. So, this hypothesis basically it came from ancient Greece only. And uh, how this predictions like movement of sun or the movement of planets if it is just observed in a different uh, lines or curves that is at a particular point if we are just expecting that uh, heavy rain will come. And if at a particular point we can just expect that the sun ray will be more and we will have a summer. So, based on that only it can be predicted that how we can just get the best output of the crops. Then if you will just see the ancient history again then Hipparch cause of roads in Greece used linear interpolation to construct a chord function which is similar to sinusoidal function especially your sine function or cos function especially if you will just see. This means that if suppose sometimes some insects are also moving in a different uh, paths. This means that they are just following some functions also at that point also. This means that if we are just relating like uh, different creatures to the nature, then we can just find that interpolation in existing at each phase of this nature also. So, they are especially used this uh, sinusoidal function to compute the positions of uh, celestial bodies. 
and uh, especially Chinese people also used this uh, interpolation method to formulate their standard calendar. Especially this is nothing but in the present uh, numerical analysis it is called uh, Gregory Newton's interpolation. So, Gregory Newton interpolation means either it is just starting from the beginning of the table or it can start from the end of the table to compute the data throughout the whole table. This means that if we will just start this year at the beginning of the table, then if you will just use this interpolation, then we can just compute that when this month will end and when the next month will start or when the year will end also. Sometimes also if you will just start this computation at the end of this year also, then if you will just take this backward calculation of all these tabular values, then we can just predict that when this Sunday will come or when this Monday will come and which month it will just fall it out, so that we can just predict it out. Indian astronomer and mathematician, if you will just see, they have also introduced this method of uh, uh, like second order interpolation of the sign function and later on method of interpolation of unequal. Uh, interval data, especially Brahmagupta introduced this one and uh, they have used also this like uh, sine function and a cost function for the second order uh, uh, interpolation functions there itself to visualize that uh, how this uh, like uh, moon and uh, this uh, structural motion of uh, this uh, sun it is just coming in the space also. So, then we will just go for this uh, basic uh, introduction of uh, interpolation. Suppose, if a function f of x is known to us, then we can just put all these tabular values in a particular form. This means, if we will have this set of data points or these tabular points like x0 and x1, x2 up to x3, it is known to us. Also, this function y equals to f of x is known to us, then especially we can just determine these values like y0 equals to f of x0, y1 equals to f of x1, y2 equals to f of x2 at particular points. Sometimes, if this function is not known to us in explicit form, then how we can just assume that this curve will move in that form or if we will have this set of data points like x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, it is known to us, then at a particular point, how we can determine this function. That especially we can just made it out if we will just use interpolation here. Suppose the set of data points, if we will have like x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2 up to x and y n, satisfying this condition y equals to f of x are given, where this explicit nature of f of x is a not known to us. Then it is possible to construct a simpler function suppose phi of x such that f of x and phi of x agrees well at the set of tabular points. This means if we will have this a set of data points like x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 here. Then if the function is not known to us, then we can just construct a simpler function suppose. This is the function we can just construct as phi of x here which can just uh, pass through these points. Then we can just say that phi of x is the interpolating polynomial with this function f of x at that points. And uh, the question now arises that how should the closeness of the approximation be measured and what is the criterion to decide the best polynomial approximation to the function. This means that if suppose phi of x is passing through these points here, then we want to find the best fit of this polynomial with this function here. This means that this is the difference is existing for the functional values with this polynomial here. So, how we can just choose that this error should be minimized here and also afterwards. At all the particular points, even if this curve is passing at that points for this polynomial phi of x, but we can just find the differences at each of the level there. So, if you just consider these points are very close to each other, then this error can be minimized. This is the first condition we can just assume here. And for that, if we will just go for a theorem here that is approximation of a function by a polynomial that is basically called Westra's theorem. This means that for using of this interpolation, we have to consider this continuous function here, neither we cannot say anything. So, based on Westra's theorem, if we will just consider that any function f of x which is a continuous function within this closed interval, suppose your beginning point is a a here and the end point if you will just consider here that is uh, like b here suppose and its for associated functional values are like f of a here 
and your associated functional value is f of b here. Then we can just say that f of x is a continuous function within this closed interval starting from the point A and ending at the point B there. Then we can just approximate this function by a polynomial P of x suppose uniformly over each of these intervals that is like x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 up to if the last point is considered as x and y n there and in each of these intervals this function is approximated by this polynomial P of x. Then we can just say that for a positive number epsilon, we can just write norm of f of x minus p of x or we can just say that absolute value of f of x minus p of x, this should be less than epsilon for x lies between a to b. And uh, to justify this uh, uh, theorem here, we will just go for this existence and uh, uniqueness theorem. The statement of this existence and uh, uniqueness theorem states that there is a unique polynomial p and x of uh, degree less or equal to n such that p n of x i equals to f of x i for i equals to 1 to up to n here. So, uh, to prove this theorem here, if you will just consider the set of uh, tabulated data points R s, if we will have the set of uh, data points uh, like uh, n plus 1 data points are in the form of like x 0 f of x 0, x 1, f of x 1 up to x n, f of x n here. Yeah. Especially they say x 0, x 1 or x i s are called tabulated points or nodal points. or data points. And if we will have like starting point is 0 and ending point is a n here, we will have n plus 1 data points. And corresponding functional values are called uh, your functional values here itself. And if we will just consider suppose two functions like f of x and g of x, two different functions, which satisfies this functional values that is f of x at all of these points or this set of data points, we can just say that f of x equals to f of x at i equals to 0, 1, 2 up to n here or we can just say that f of x i equals to f x i and uh, g of x i, this equals to also f of x i at i equals to 0, 1, 2 up to n, then we can just say that this is also a polynomial of a degree n, since we will have uh, n plus 1 points here, this is also g of x i is also a polynomial of degree n here. So, if you just take the difference of uh, these two functions here, like suppose we will have h of x this equals to f x minus g x. This will just represent a polynomial of a degree less or equal to n here since it consists of n plus 1 points and it has zeros at n plus 1 points if you will just see. But a polynomial of a degree less or equal to n has exactly n roots thus h of x is identically 0 here. And especially we can just say, say that f of x equals to or it can just say that f of x is equivalent to g of x here. This is nothing but that the interpolating polynomial is unique. And if you will just go for like examples of a polynomial interpolation here, first we will just go for linear interpolation suppose. Linear interpolation means we will have like two points and within that if you will just approximate suppose x 0 f of x 0 are the first point and uh, x 1 f of x 1 is the second point here. Then the best way to fit this polynomial is that if you will just put a straight line 
on these two points here. And it is just represent a polynomial of a degree or order it should be less or equal to 1 here. And if you will just uh, take 3 points suppose. So, if you will just take 3 points then we can just represent this, this and this one as the 3 points here x1, f1, x2, f2 here. And if you can just uh, join by a curve here this can just represented in this form here and it can just represent a polynomial of order less or equal to 2 there that passes through these 3 points here. So, obviously, we can just say that if you will uh, have 2 points here that is just representing a linear interpolating polynomial and if you will have just uh, 3 points then we can just say that it is just representing a quadratic polynomial here. So, first if you will just go for this linear interpolation here, we will have like a 2 points x0 f of x0 and x1 f of x1, the line interpolating with these 2 points are in the form of like if you will just write that can be represented in the form of f1 x, this equals to like our intercepting form we can just write as f of x0 plus your slope that is nothing but f of x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0 into your uh, value that is in the form of like x minus x0 here. Especially we used to write this one as y minus y0 this as m into x minus x0 here, m is nothing but the slope that is nothing but dy by dx sometimes we are just writing, sometimes if the functional values is known to us then we can just represent as this one here. So, this is the first representation of this linear interpolating polynomial. For example, if you will just consider find a polynomial that interpolates suppose the point 1, 2 and 2, 4, then directly if this point is written as a 1, 2 here and the second point if it is written as 2, 4 here. So, directly we can just put this uh, y0 as a 2 here and x0 is a 1 here, then like x1 value we can just put as a 2 here and uh, f of x1 can be represented as 4 here as. And if you will just compute this one, so f1 x can be written in the form of first value f of x0 we can just write that is nothing but uh, 2 here and then plus f of x1 f of x1 is a nothing but uh, 4 minus uh, we can just say f of x0 is a 2 here divided by x1 minus x0. So, x1 is considered as a 2 here 2 minus 1 into x minus 1 here and obviously, this will just uh, represent the value as 2 x here. Similarly, if you will just uh, go for a quadratic interpolation here. So, the quadratic interpolation representation can be written as the quadratic interpolation can be constructed by considering like 3 points here that is x0, f of x0, x1, f of x1, x2, f of x2 here. If you will just consider this uh, 3 points then we can just uh, write this formulation that is the interpolating or quadratic interpolating polynomial as f 2 x this equals to b 0 plus b 1 x minus x 0 b 2 x minus x 0 x minus x 1 here, where this coefficients b 0 can be defined as f of x 0 here. And if you just write b 1 here that is nothing but f of x 1 minus f of x 0 divided by x 1 minus x 0 here. Similarly, b 2 can be written as f of x 2 minus f of x 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 minus f of x 1 minus f of x 0 divided by x 1 minus x 0 whole divided by x 2 minus x 0 here. Especially if you will just see the first coefficient here up to this one, this just represents the linear interpolating polynomial. And the extra term if it is added in this form 
in this equation here that is just representing this quadratic interpolation here. So, based on this uh, if you will just uh, go for some uh, examples of uh, like linear interpolation and quadratic interpolation we can just find that interpolation is used to provide an estimate of a tabulated function at the values where this uh, uh, functional values is not known to us. Particularly if you will have a curve here and at a particular point if you want to calculate this functional values then we will just use this interpolation. Then suppose the question is asked that if the sin is the function here and the functional values for, for sin x is given at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 here and it is asked to compute sin of 0 0.15 based on this uh, tabular values. Then if you will just use this linear interpolation that is represented in the form of like uh, f1 x as b0 plus b1 x minus x0 formulation. Then we can just obtain this value as a 0 0.1493 here, but exactly the true value is a 0 0.1494 up to 4 decimal places. So, if you will just look at it then this error is existing after like a third decimal places. And uh, Next we will just go for this uh, method of interpolation that uh, where we can just use this uh, interpolation if suppose the tabular values are uh, equally spaced or unequally spaced. Suppose if sometimes some points if it is asked to evaluate it is not within the range of uh, this uh, interval where this function is continuous. Then the process to find this functional values outside this interval is called extrapolation. And, uh, we can just visualize that if the data points are existing like x0, f of x0, x1, f of x1, x2, f of x2. So, this distance is not equals to this distance also sometimes. So, then we will have like a two types of arguments are there that is equally spaced arguments and unequally spaced arguments some methods are existing for this interpolation that is based on this equally spaced intervals and some methods that is basically existing for unequally spaced arguments. Basically for equal spaced arguments we are just using Newton's and uh, Gauss interpolation, for unequal spaced intervals we are just using Lagrange's and uh, Newton's divided difference interpolation. And the basic advantage of this unequal spaced arguments formulation is that it can handle both these equally spaced and unequally spaced arguments. And uh, if you will just go for this like finite difference operators here that is when the arguments are equally spaced suppose. Equally spaced means we can just consider that your x0, x1, x2 up to xn all are equally spaced means the distance between these two points all are equal here. And uh, then we can just write here x i minus x i minus 1 this equals to h here if the space size is h here. And specifically if x 0 is the starting point then we can just write x 1 equals to x 0 plus h here and x 2 can be written as x 0 plus 2 h here or we can just write x 2 equals to x 1 plus h this means that x0 plus 2 is there itself. And if you will just use this functional values at these points especially we are just writing f of xi this is nothing but f of xi minus 1 plus h here for uh, like uh, i equals to 1, 2, 3 up to n there. Then we can just use like uh, different uh, finite difference operators for this formulation or to find this uh, values using this uh, finite difference points x0, x1 to xn for the like a finite difference interpolation here or finite difference operators here. So, specifically if you will just see here this finite difference uh, operators basically it is existing like forward difference operator, backward difference operator, central difference operator, average operator, shift operator and uh, differential operator. So, first we will just go for this forward difference operator and backward difference operator based on this like uh, if all these points are equispaced here or we can just say that the distance between all of these points are equal. So, for the forward difference operator 
if you will just uh, use this uh, tabular values that is in the form of like x0, y0, x1, y1 up to xn, yn here. Then we can just uh, use uh, this uh, function as y equals to f of x here and uh, delta of f of x can be written as f of x plus h minus f of x here if h is the space size between these two points x0 and x1 here and especially if you just write in a functional form here delta of y0 this can be written as y1 minus y0 here. Similarly, if you will just write delta of y1 this can be written as y2 minus y1 and if you just continue up to delta of uh, y n here. So, it can be written as y n plus 1 minus y n. If you just see y n plus 1 is not within this tabular values, then we can just compute this delta operator up to y n minus 1 here. So, especially it can be written as y n minus y n minus 1. If you just use this uh, backward difference operator, so backward difference operator it is just uh, moves this functional values towards the back of the point there. This means that nabla is the operator which is called the backward operator and delta is the operator which is called the forward operator here. So, if we just use this nabla operator then we can just write this one as y1 minus y0 and if you just relate this operators here then we can just say that delta of y0 this is nothing but nabla of y1 here. And similarly, all other operator values you can just define here that is nabla of y2 that can be written as y2 minus y1 here and if you just go for this up to last point here, we can just write nabla of yn as yn minus yn minus 1 here. And if you just go for uh, like central difference operator, central difference operator means we can just write this central difference operator as small delta here and if it is uh, operated on function f of x especially this can be written in the form of like f of x plus h by 2 minus f of x minus h by 2 here. And uh, in the complete form or in the relation of uh, y r if it can be written, so it can be written in the form like delta to the power n of y r minus half as delta to the power n minus 1 y r minus delta to the power n minus 1 1 y r minus 1 r equals to 1 2 3 here. Especially if you just see here that if n is odd we can just write in this form if n is even then we can just write delta to the power n y r equals to delta to the power n minus 1 y r plus half minus delta to the power n minus 1 y of r minus half here. And if you just consider delta to the power 0 of y r this is nothing but y r here. So, if you just see here that if twice if you just uh, use this operator that is nothing but like delta can be operated on f of x plus h by 2 then again 1 h plus h, h by 2 will be added here then it can just represent as f of x plus h here and uh, it can just give another value that is f of x plus h by 2 minus f of sorry minus h by 2 here then it can just give you f of x plus h minus f of x there. Similarly, if you just use this delta operator once more for this function here, this can just give you like f of x minus h by 2 plus h by 2 minus f of x minus h by 2 minus h by 2 here. So, then this will just give you the function like f of x minus f of x minus h that will just give you a complete form of this equation if you will just uh, use this uh, operator twice here. This can be written as f of x plus h minus f of x minus you can just say that this is f of x minus f of x minus h. Similarly, if you will just go for this average operator, so average operator means we can just write this one as uh, in the form of a mu operator that is mu of f of x can be written as half of f of x plus h by 2 plus f of x minus h by 2 here. And in the yr form if you will just write this equation that can be written in the form of like mu of y r equals to half of y r plus half plus y of r minus half here. Specifically all these operators that are dependent 
on a new operator that is called shift operator here. So, specifically the shift operator is denoted by the capital letter E here and this is basically called your shift operator and whenever it is operated on this function f of x, it just moves this function to the immediate next step there. This means that you can just write E of f of x as f of x plus h here. So, all these functions, so whatever we have just discussed here like Newton's forward difference operator, backward difference operator, central difference operator or average operator, all these functions can be expressed in the form of shift operator here, that is in the form of E here. So, specifically there is a operator that is called a differential operator, usually this differential operator is a designated as a d of f of x, that is nothing but d by dx of f of x here. So, with this we, uh, uh, I am just uh, ending of uh, this lecture and in the next lecture I will just uh, continue for uh, this uh, Newton's forward difference operator and backward difference operator or how this operator relation can be established based on this shift operator here. Thank you for listening this lecture.